in bundles to burn them and gather the wheat until the borns. So he's telling them and he explains it to them and they like, I still don't get it. <laughs> I still don't get it. So in verse 37, he begins to break it down for you. Uh, because his disciples got there and they're talking and, 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 and said, well, we don't fully understand that. Because you know how it is. Because if we don't understand, the enemy's going to steal it from us. So you've got to break this down for us. Verse 37. He answered and he said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. So he makes it plain and he gets this. Look, look, all of the kingdom citizens, that's the ones. That's the good seeds. Now, the enemy then sold some other. That's his children. Their job is to confuse the other people. See, you live in your life the way you're supposed to. You're spreading the word. But then there's some other fools out here. They're the one and they're so. And now the people understanding is all mixed up. They don't know to follow. They, they don't know to follow Brother Bruce. They don't know to uh, follow brother, uh, brother Idiot. So they don't know which way to go. And so that's where, that's where the understanding part, that's where the battle begins. And that's where you just have to live. See, consistency is the name of the game. See, if you're consistent in the way you live, they're going to remember that. Uh, I had the privilege of, of sitting down uh, this past Sunday. Uh, Bruce was one of the few people that were uh, close enough to where when we first got saved, uh, we got saved in, in January. He got saved. And, and so he had a chance to see how our growth and our development was. Uh, and, and, and as he was sitting, as I was teaching, my mind just went back to, 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 uh, to the very beginning. Uh, he used to be a songwriter. Y'all didn't know that, huh? <laughs> he wrote a song. I mean, he loved God, and, and, and he had a song that, that he used to sing. He was in the choir, and his heart was right. But what happened was there were so many people that were tares, and those tares affected his development. And that's what happens with people. They, they, they love God, but they got so many tares around. And those tears wind up getting you off course. But, but because of the love of God, he will put you back in position to where you're going to find some of those good seeds. And those good seeds that were sown will kind of bring you back in. And, and, and that's, that's the thing that I love about God so much. He, he will find you. And he will let you know, no, 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 do this, do that. So all he's looking for, he's looking for those good seeds. They got tares all over the place, I hate to tell you. Well, yeah. and, but because God loves and he has them around, so look, no, we're not going to ruin it because if we do, we're going to hurt the good seeds. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to hurt the weak. And so in his infinite wisdom allows all of us to grow together, but the day are coming in which he's going to separate us. And when he does... It's going to be very plain. Come on, let me get through all of the rest of this one. I think I, 37, uh, 38, the good seeds or the children, 39. The enemy that soweth them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Last verse. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. So there are a lot of individuals, they'd say a lot of different things. They say, look, you know, uh, I don't really believe in heaven or hell. Okay, well, you know, that's on you. You will have a rude awakening. If I'm, uh, let's just say if you're right and there is no heaven or hell. Well, you know, so be it. I don't think you're right. I know you're not right. But what just so happens. I'm right, and there is a heaven and a hell. I think you're going to wish that you had made a different choice. So even though we live in this world, 
They got a lot of crazy people, and they walk out this thing. But God has us. Look to your neighbor and say, he's got me. And he's going to use your words and your life to begin to help those tares. Because that's what it's all about. It's about converting the tares. God wants everybody saved. That's the reason why he's, he, he hadn't showed up. I mean, let's face it. If, if your whole purpose was to go to heaven, as soon as you accepted him, he would have snatched you out of here. But his purpose was so that you can help some of those tares. Because they're all mixed up. I mean, they got some people that are mixed up. Well, if you don't believe me, sometime today, you simply Google. Google the number of people that say they Jesus. You will be amazed and surprised how people literally, and they have a lot of people following them. They are calling themselves the son of God. And I mean, you got them as crazy as, as one guy says that he's Jesus. The first Jesus failed because he had to come. Really, Jesus was supposed to get married and have a family and things like that. It's, I, it's crazy, I'm telling you, but it is. And so they, got, they, they are tares. And they have people that follow them. As crazy as that sounds, people follow them. Thank God for y'all. Y'all so smart. That stuff would never. As soon as somebody said, I'm Jesus, you, you just, you just hey, let me back up, man. Lightning about to strike over here. Let me back up. All right. Come on, let's get this one right here. I want you to go with me to uh, Mark 10, 15. Mark 10, 15. I want to cover some scriptures. Uh, and, of course, the subject matter is going to all be the kingdom of heaven. Mark 10, 15. Mark 10, 15, it says, Verily, verily, or verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Now, we talked about this before. The kingdom of, uh, the, a child comes to the kingdom with a, uh, a belief, a trust. A uh, parent. All right? That's the best example. Now, when a child is first coming to this world, they are depending upon mom and dad for everything. They can't, they can't communicate, but they trust. And they, and, and they, you know, after a while, they know the difference between Pastor Jackson and mommy. They, they, they just know. And so as a result, that trust and that bond begins to be there and then nothing can separate that. And so when he says that, look, first thing I need y'all to do is I need you to come as a little child. When you receive me, you're not going to let nobody, nobody separate you from me. We're going to always be together. Ain't nobody going to tell you anything different. Now, there are going to be somebody that's going to try. But just like that child bonds with mom and dad, I want you to bond with me like that. No matter what it is that they're telling you, no matter what you see, it's a lie. John 10.10, 10. let's go back there. It's a lie. John 10.10, 10. go there. John 10.10 10 is kingdom scripture, but this one here ties right back into it. In John 10.10, 10, it says, for the thief coming not but to what? What else? And destroy it. But he said this, this is the kingdom. But I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Now, back to the kingdom of heaven. Uh, like a, a little child. As the child grows, the child starts to receive his or her information from another soul. It, it's, it, it never feels, in the beginning, that child, mom and dad, is the best thing in the world. But then after a while, the source of information begins to change, and as a result, they don't see mom and dad as once they, they, they should have. They begin to see them as like, you trying to stop me from having fun. You trying to keep me from enjoying life. 
your life was messed up, so now you're trying to mess my life up. Well, in the meantime, what has happened? Another source of information has crept in there. But man, if we can just stay as a child, if we can just stay there, and that source of information never changes. You remember when, when Adam messed up? God wants to know, who told you that? Who told you you was naked? Who are you listening to now? And so that's where we have to stay. Man, we have to, uh, we have to grab this word and hold on for dear life. Because as time go on, the enemy is going to do his very best to get us another source of information, to get us to look at God differently, to get, a, get us to, to question what it is that, that, that we're learning. And so that's the enemy's job. If he can get you to question, because that's all he did with Eve. Had God really said that? Did, did, did he really say that? Yeah, that's what he said. Why am I talking to you anyway? You need to be gone. Go, get away from me. But what happens is you hold conversation too long with the tares. You can't talk to tares too long because they'll, begin, they'll get you to, to second guess even the truth about yourself. Oh, you ain't, you ain't so good. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. And then you begin to see yourself in a different light. Hey, you the good, you the good seed. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm the good seed. Don't you let those tares talk you out your game. Uh, 10, 10, let me read it again. It says, for the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may have life more abundantly. So in the kingdom, it's all about he wants everything whole. Now, the cool thing is it doesn't matter how long it's been broke. It doesn't matter how long it's been broke. He's still able to put all of the pieces back together. There is no point where, you know, I didn't, I didn't miss. I mean, ask Abraham. Abraham was a very old dude. Oh, he, you know, he, he didn't think it was possible. But God put him and he got his old wife and gave him a young son. So no matter how long it's been or how long you think, he's still able to put all that back together. Sister Henry, make sure you take your book home. Okay, all right. I had it on the side. I made sure not put it there for you. Come on, let's go with me. Thank you, Miss Tina. Uh, jump with me. I'm going to cover as many of these kingdom scriptures as I can. John 3.3. 3. John 3. Of course, you know John 3.16, but before we get to 16, I want you to take a look at John 3 and 3. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. In fact, the kingdom of heaven is in you. The kingdom is in you. You are a kingdom carrier. Glory to God. Kingdom carrier. John 3 and 3. John 3 and 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto, unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot, what? See the kingdom of God. So it all starts with the new birth. You receive Jesus, and after that, okay, now I'm in this kingdom, but I don't know what the heck I'm supposed to do in this kingdom. So the first thing is salvation. After salvation, you in the kingdom, but man, you, got, you just got to stay in it. Now you begin to learn. Now you begin to understand. Now you begin to surround yourself with other good seed. You got to leave the terror alone. You, 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 for some people, they get saved. For some people, family is important. Uh, family is important to me, too. <clears throat> but you got to understand my definition of family. It's the same as Jesus' definition of family. You remember when he was preaching, he was doing a meeting, and then somebody came, hey, 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 your mom and your brother outside, and your sister, they, they won't talk to you. Hey, who is my mom and my dad? My mom and dad is the ones that's doing the will of the Father. So he gave us a new definition for family. If they're not doing the will of the Father, 
they kinfolk, different than family. Family, we're going in the same direction. Hey, we got people that share the same DNA, but they're going in two different directions. Uh, I can remember when I had uh, uh, somebody that shared my DNA, they just didn't believe in Jesus. Hey, not a problem. That don't, that don't affect me. I still believe in Jesus. Now, what it does affect is me and you. That does affect that because now our, our fellowship is going to be very much limited to how you doing? Doing okay? Children's good? Good, good, good. Looking good, man. See, you ain't putting on much weight. Good. Hey, see you next time. <laughs> That's, there's not a whole lot of fellowship because for me, my king is important. For him, my king does not exist. Well, of course, we're not going to, we're not, there's not a whole lot we could talk about. You understand? Because that is how committed I am to my king. All right. Come on, let's get this one right here. Uh, Matthew 6 and 10. This is one that you, that, that, that you ought to know. Matthew 6 and 10. Matthew 6 and 10. Y'all hear them pages? And uh, Matthew 6 and 10. For those of you that are germaphobes, yes, I do lick my finger and, and, and get my page, all right? Yes, I do do that. I blessed my Bible before I opened it, all right? Matthew 6 and 10. In Matthew 6 and 10, it says, Thy kingdom do what? Come. Thy will be done. Where? In earth as it is in heaven. So, well, let's go ahead and get nine. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which, is, which art in where? Hallowed be thy name. So it's all about getting his kingdom, which is an invisible kingdom, here to planet earth. Uh, that's part of the apostolic. That's part of the fivefold ministry to take heaven and bring heaven from there to here. So often when I was growing up, I thought heaven was some place that I was trying to get to. No, God wants to bring heaven here. He wants to win it here. He wants everything in heaven. You know, the whole peace on earth, nothing broken, nothing missing. He wants that in your life. He wants that to be a part of your, your everyday I mean, he, he just wants peace. He wants it nice and, and joyful. He wants you to enjoy yourself. He wants you, to, he wants you to have fun down here. He wants you winning at everything, losing at nothing. That's what he wants for you. Come on, let's go. Uh, Matthew 7 and 21. Matthew 7 and 21. Matthew 7 and 21. Matthew 7 and 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the what? Kingdom of, Kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So even though a lot of people, you know, they praise, they, they say all kind of things, they, they, because now everybody knows uh, kingdom language, so to speak. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, glory. God is good. God is good. He's great. I love him. 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 Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 know all of the, they all know all of the things to say. But if you just kind of follow them a little bit, you're going to see that what they were saying does not really match up. Because not long ago, you were telling me about how much you love him but now you're telling me how much you hate this person here. Not long ago, you was talking about how you, you bless the Lord at all times, but now you cussing like a sailor. No offense to any sailors in here, because I don't know why they say that. Because I know, I know people that are in the army, they curse too. So Marines, more than just sailors. So I don't know, they just always say that, cuss like a sailor. I don't know where it came from, I just picked it up. And so I just perpetuated. So now I'm going to have to stop it, huh? Cuss like a high schooler. Cuss like a worker. Cuss like, 
Yeah. Oh. <laughs> they, they cuss more than just sailors cuss. So it, it's, yeah, it, it's all about making certain that we walk in this thing. And that's what he said. Look, don't be shocked, guys. There are going to be some people that, that you think supposed to make it that just ain't. So, you know, don't, don't, don't sweat it. Uh, it. It's very important that you take care of you. Right. Take care of you. You love God. You walk in your kingdom citizenship. Come on, let's go. Matthew 6 and 4. Matthew 6 and 4. Now, in Matthew 6 and 4, uh, this is the way kingdom citizens operate. Kingdom citizens is not about the limelight. Uh, if the limelight comes, so be it. But for the most part, the limelight only reflects what's been going on when there was no light. Six and four it says, uh, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father that would see it in secret himself shall reward thee what? Open. Openly. See, in, in our kingdom citizenship, we don't do things for show. We don't do things for pats on the back. I know all those things are important. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I'm always repenting because when I'm telling people thank you for the things that they've done, somebody always gets, you know, I always forget them off my list. And, and thank God that they're mature enough to understand that it's not about me thanking them publicly. Uh, so I appreciate that. But for the most part, we do things because we love God. That's, that's the reason why we do it. We don't do it because we want to, the public to know how fantastic we are. I know you're fantastic. Uh, so don't, don't get so caught up in public accolades because public accolades, if you read it, he said, look, that's your reward. Yeah, that's, that's a, that, 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 that kudos, that pat on the back. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's good. Uh, let me tell you something. I want, I want a little more than that. I, I, I want God to be pleased with me. So in, in, in order for God to be pleased with me, my motive has to be right. Uh, there's, and, and all of us have done things for less than pure motives. You know, we, we, we've done things because we wanted something in return. You know, it wasn't something that we done just to be doing it. We did it because, you know, I want something out of this deal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all know what I'm saying. I didn't, take you, I didn't take you out for lunch just to take you out for lunch. I didn't have, we, we didn't, we didn't go... <laughs> We didn't go to the movie just to go to the movie. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I, didn't, I didn't give you a ride to church just to give you a ride to church. I want some gas money too, <laughs> bless the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. I mean, people are crazy. I mean, they had a lady that came to church. I kid you not. She came to church and, and, and she walked in. This one right here, and this nice plilt right here. And, and, and then after Sir was over, she expected somebody to pay her. I came to church. Okay. Y'all should pay me? Is that what you think? Miss, I, I, I don't know what I did to mislead you, but don't come back. <laughs> don't come back. And then, so people crazy. You know, I can't make this stuff up. Uh, let me get Genesis 126, and this is the one that, we, uh, that I left off at. This is, uh, this is your dominion scripture. 126, it says, And God said, Let us make uh, mankind in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That's our dominion scripture. Once you receive Jesus, you got right back into Genesis 126. Before Jesus, you were outside of 126. Once you made him your Lord and Savior, once you accepted him, you got right back into the scripture. It's like you never left. And so now it's all about this dominion. Now, the dominion is not over another human being. It's over your circumstance. It's over the enemy. It's over those things. You, you don't have dominion over me. You know, you don't walk up and say, 
Pastor, I'm taking my dominion over you. No, you're not. <laughs> you don't have dominion over another person. You have dominion over everything but another human being. And sometimes with our crazy self, we act like we have dominion over God, too, because we always telling him what to do and when to do it. Hurry up, Lord Jesus. Hurry up. What? No. So our dominion is over everything but. So you do have dominion. It's just an understanding of who you are and who you have that dominion over. Last scripture, and then after that, I am going to uh, uh, let my wife say a few things because I do want her to talk about uh, this Saturday. Uh, is it this Saturday? It has to be. It's the last Saturday in the month. Man, look like just, it's 2020 just started. Man. So get me uh, our, 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 uh, our opening scripture, Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33, this is the one. Now that you're saved, this is your scripture. Every single day is about this one right here. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So it's all about your quest is about, Lord, I'm seeking your kingdom. I want to do things the way you want them done. That's what this thing is all about. It's about you seeking his kingdom and you living your life the way that he wants you to live it. Not the way that you want to, unless the way you want to lines up with what his word does. Amen? Uh, you had anything? Okay. If you need an offering envelope, lift your hands, please. Bless the Lord God Almighty. Bless the Lord God Almighty. 